In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the first five stages of HESAP. As we know, HESAP consists of 12 stages. So the first five are called preliminary stages and the last seven are called the seven HESAP principles. Let's now discuss the first five stages of HESAP. The first is assembling the HESAP team. The second stage is identification of products or product description. The third stage is establishment of the intended use. The fourth stage is development of a process flow diagram. And the fifth step is verification of the process flow diagram on site. Before we move any further, it is important for us to understand what a HACCP team is. A HACCP team is a multidisciplinary group of individuals from the organization that come together to contribute their skills, knowledge, and expertise to effectively implement the HACCP plan. The HACCP team can consist of different people, but it's important that all key departments are represented. A typical HACCP team in a big organization will consist of a senior management representative, a quality assurance manager, a maintenance manager, a production manager, as well as sanitation manager, the person responsible for cleaning or supervising the cleaning in the facility. In small organization, there could be two, three, four people. It doesn't really matter for as long as there is a core team and all the teams or all the departments are represented. So this would be a typical organogram of a HACCP team where all team members work with the food safety team leader who is appointed by senior management representative and the food safety team leader then appoints the rest of the team members. It is important that all team members are sufficiently trained and that they are familiar with what they do in their respective departments. Therefore, in many organizations, the HACCP team will consist of managers of the respective departments. It is important that the HACCP team is competent, competent and that will be alluded to by their experience and the training that they have attained throughout the years. It is very important that they at least have HACCP um, training and the HACCP team leader or the food safety team leader must of course have advanced training. It's very important that uh, the HACCP team leader is very familiar with all the 12 stages of HACCP as well as how to draw a HACCP plan. Depending on the product that a company produces for the organization and the size of their particular organization, ideally each div division needs to be represented by a member that will contribute their skills, knowledge and experience to the implementation of an effective HACCP plan. Let's now move to stage two. In stage two, we describe the product. So describing the product is basically writing on paper how the product looks and what are its physical characteristic, uh, chemical characteristics, microbiological characteristics, as well as its composition. So in normally what would include are the ingredients that are used in making the product, uh, that will also include information that is supposed to be um, uh, that is supposed to inform the consumer more about the product. For an example, the best before date, the expiry date, uh, any warnings, uh, storage conditions, the shelf life of the product, uh, any other information that is mandated by law. For an example, um, listing uh, the content, energy content, fat calories, um, the, uh, the calories in total, fat, cholesterol, the amount of nutrients it, 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 it consists of, and any other relevant information. You may also include uh, basically informing the consumer what the product is, as well as the process that has been made to making the product. For an example, you can say it is vacuum packed meat. So basically we have informed the consumer that is the product is vacuum packed. Now let's move to stage three. 
you must identify the intended use of the product. So basically here, you describe the intended use of the product, you describe the normal expected use of the product, as well as who can consume the product. So let's take an example of a citrus fruit. So some of us can eat the fruit, we peel uh, the orange, take out the pills and eat what is inside. But sometimes when people bake or maybe they, use, they, they make gin, they can use the pills. Uh, they can either use it as a, a zest or they can peel uh, the orange and put it in gin to add as a flavorant to put uh, to enhance the flavor of their particular drink that they're drinking normally that will be gin or cocktails so that's what we mean by intended use it is also important for your team to identify vulnerable consumers. So what do we mean by that? It's that the, those are the people that are not supposed to consume the product, either because it can cause them harm or maybe they can develop an allergic reaction towards it. So it's very important for your team to identify vulnerable consumers. Now let's move to stage four. So in stage four, we are now constructing a flow diagram. So basically a flow diagram means how is the product produced? So from when you receive it from your supplier to storing it in a freezer or cold storage, to preparing it, to cooking, packaging, and maybe storing it for dispatch. So basically what is the process that your product um, uh, uh, follows when it is being made. So you receive raw ingredients, you mix it, uh, all the raw ingredients that you have received, so you receive them, you mix them, and then maybe you bake your bread or your pie, and after baking, you cool it down, and then you pack it into maybe a certain uh, packaging material, you display it to sell it to consumers, or you put it in big boxes so that you can sell. So that is essentially what a fl process flow is. It is important that all steps are identified and so that you'll, you'll be able to conduct a thorough hazard analysis for each one of those steps. So this is a typical example of a process flow diagram. It is crucial to ensure that you indicate where in the facility do these steps uh, occur. So what you'll do, you'll put a plan schematic or um, a, a, your kitchen plan or possibly your food processing area plan and then indicate where you do receiving, where you do cold storage, where do you prepare your product, where do you cook, where you package, where do you store it and get it ready for dispatch. In some small kitchens, it could actually be one room. That is fine for as long as it is indicated. So once you have drawn a flow diagram with the rest of your team making a contribution, you must ensure that you verify it. So what do you mean by verification? We mean that the team members walk together and follow the product. At is this really receiving? Is it where we store the product? Is it where we prepare? Is it where we cook? Is it where we pack? pack it is it where we store it and get it ready for distribution so basically you are confirming that what is written on paper is indeed true so once all of you have verified the flow diagram then you sign and confirm or you can do it via through a HESAP meeting for an example and say indeed this process flow is correct. Normally you'll sign on the document where the process flow is written and include who was present as well as the date of confirmation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you conduct the preliminary analysis of the 12 stages of HESAP.